films. Uh, James, let's get your thoughts on New York, A Winter's Tale. Um, you know there are problems when you've got lots of Oscar winning, a winning actors in your movie and yet the most interesting character is a flying white horse. Um, I, I, I suppose you'd class this as a grown-up fairy tale, but I'll be, I'll be absolutely honest, I found it very difficult to understand. I wasn't entirely sure what was happening. Um, I think part of the problem is that, well, of course, like all fairy tales, there's a very strong fantasy element. But then there's also this very strong, recognisable, normal, everyday New York in there as well. So there's this clash of sort of realism and fantasy. And it's never really explained. Um, and I just kept thinking of, of sort of other fantasy films where they, they just lay down the rules. Like you watch Gremlins and the old guy <laughs> says, don't feed him after midnight or put him in sunlight or give him, or you know get him wet. Never you, ending story. Th there's rules, right? Yeah. And you kind of go, okay, it's a fantasy. I know it's it's a fairy tale, but at least I understand what the, the point is. I understand what the rules are. And I think this needed more of those signposts. So, for example, the flying white horse. This flying white horse just kind of turns up out of nowhere. Uh, Colin Farrell's character actually calls it a horse. Um, but then Russell Crowe's character, who's who's a sort of mobster in New York, keeps referring to it as a dog, which I never entirely understood. Um, but you're just sat there going, well, what? I, where does the horse come from? What you know? What are the rules? What's going Pegasus, on here? Pegasus. Pegasus. There's there's a lot of time travel in this. So some of it is set in, I think it's sort of 1915, 1916, and then some of it's set in 2014. That that I never really understood why they time travel. There's there's stuff about starlight and stars. Will Smith crops up as a devil at one With point. With really bad teeth. And he's it's quite good because it's Will Smith. Yeah. And I missed a, him. Akiva Goldsman, the guy who 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 wrote and directed this, you know, is I think he wrote I Am Legend for Will Smith and has worked with him before. So a lot of his mates turn up. And yeah. so there's some big names in there. But you never really understand exactly why and what's going on. I hear the book upon which this is based is a monster. It's like 800 pages. And I suspect that things might be explained more in the book. Um, but I don't think the film has uh, a real idea of what it's actually trying to do and what it's trying to achieve. Lots of unanswered questions. Jessica Brown Findlay. He's meant to have weeks to live and is dying of consumption. I mean, she looks like she should be in like Top Sante magazine or something. She's glowing with health in this movie. She, it She's doesn't look with right. Love for um, Colin Farrell. But she, but even before she meets him, Colin Farrell and Stanley, who I, I think is quite fun in this movie because he, you know, he's a bit of a Jack the Lad. I mm -hmm. like him. You know, he's perfectly watchable and I, and I like the guy. But he's got hair in this, which I just kept thinking of sort of um, nine, early 1990s Madchester bands. He's got like the curtains, <laughs> the curtains and the undercut. Yeah. And you think... Hey, it's Boyzone. He auditioned for them as well. Way yeah, back in the but day. It's, it's more like Happy Mondays. I mean, you, you're kind of expecting Beds to be following him around, shaking his maracas, you know, in 1916 New York. You think, what, really? <laughs> that haircut then? Um, but I think that, that actually there's one bit where... The girl, uh, Colin Farrell, in 1916, meets this little girl, befriends her. Then he magically crops up 99 years later or 98 years later in, in 2014 and discovers that this little girl is, is still alive. Yeah, what, is she 106? She's 105, 106, <laughs> okay. but she's also still working. She's the editor of a New York newspaper. What, 106 years <laughs> old? She's not only working, but is editing a, a big newspaper in the city? I don't understand it. Uh, the only thing I do understand about the film is that Russell Crowe is, I mean, he is scenery chewing like never before. I mean, it is twitching and hamming and facial mugging. He's meant to be Irish, by the way. He's trying so hard to be Irish, he's virtually river dancing <laughs> through New York City. I mean, it is, it is an unbelievable performance. And it's kind of entertaining because it is so ridiculous, but... You know, you just think that Russell is essentially trying... He's a sporting role, but essentially trying to steal steal the limelight a little bit. And it's it's kind of awful to watch.